No. Extremely proud of my players. The way we played, the way we dominated the game, the way we tried, the way we continued, um, the way we controlled the game. And uh, we missed in the final thirds. Um, that is part to find the final pass because we had so many situations um, to finish those situations better. And then we had two scandalous penalties. Which do you think was the stronger claim of the two? The Dan Byrne pull? No, it's not about the stronger. There are two penalties. That's very simple. The referee offer any opinion to you as to why not afterwards? I'm not talking. I'm talking about what I've seen now. And it's two scandalous penalties. So what's your thought process on why VAR didn't give it then? I don't know. But I'm so proud of the work that we've done to see a team that plays the way we play today again. Do you think it was a case, do you think you had enough chances to win the game and you didn't take those chances? Or do you have to give Newcastle credit for the way they kept you at bay? I think we generated a lot of situations, a lot of superiority in the game, but we liked the fact that we needed an extra touch, an extra pass, an extra movement um, to get clearer chances. But we had, I think, enough chances to win the game. Was it frustrating for you? No. I'm so proud of this team. Do you think as well, the way you're playing now, that you're going to get more teams come here on nights like tonight and set up in the way that Newcastle did? In, in, a, in a way, it's a compliment to you. I think Newcastle wanted to set up like this. That is not the way they play. <laughs> they haven't played against any team like this. So it's great to our players. What do you think of the point overall tonight? Well, that you cannot win, <laughs> you don't lose. We hit a clean sheet, uh, we had a really good performance and, and we go again. Does it feel like two points dropped this? No, I wanted to win the game, but uh, we draw it and, um, and we should have done certain things better, especially in the final third. And, uh, and we should have two penalties to, to win the game and then it was a different story. Did you have enough on the bench to change the game at all? Well, we had what we have. Obviously, we had some injuries as well, and attacking areas, um, we don't have that many options. But um, it's what it is. I'm so proud of them. You're proud of them, but the window is open. Do you need more options and quickly? That's something that we always try to improve our team, and every window is really important because we still have a lot of things to, to do in this team. Thanks, Miko. Thank you very much. But six consecutive clean sheets, and that <laughs> final clean sheet was under threat right at the end. You were out of your seat <laughs> as Nick Pope spread himself brilliantly. Yeah, what a, what a signing he's, uh, he's been for Newcastle. Uh, the number of times he's done this, when teams have managed to get through that defence, your keeper you need to rely on your keeper at times and that makes the difference between good and very good goalkeepers that not had a lot to do during the game but that is a magnificent save just keep it out do anything to keep the ball out and that's exactly what he's done good from Arsenal it's a good strike that is but he's done ever so well good strike from Anketia gets into that good position decent touch he puts it out there then gets his shot away with the left foot, but that is fantastic. Could any really? Cassie have done any more? I don't think so. I think that what he's done there, you can see like the way the ball's come through. His touch was very good. He's a very clean contact on it. But like the goalkeepers now, especially look at someone like Nick Pope, to beat him there, you know what I mean? The way they use their feet now, that would have to have been a... He'd have to have got that ball higher or something. But I don't think either of them could have done any better. I thought it was a great save and it was a great effort from Eddie. We thought at one stage set plays might decide it. Arsenal went very close with yes, one as well. Yes, yeah, with uh, Martinelli there because again, Kieran Trippier and Dan Burke, they've done brilliantly. Just got away and I'm thinking, oh, God, there's no one on the back post neither. You know, you're thinking, like, you're looking at um, Tommy Asso, he's, he's actually going the other way instead of maybe coming towards the goal, he'd get himself a free goal maybe, but you, you know, that's the way the game was going. It was very, it's going to be very close um, and unfortunately for Martinelli, there. Didn't, get, didn't go the right side of the post. Did you think at any stage Arsenal might have had a penalty, right? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, with Gabriel. You it's can't even <laughs> see it without laughing, look. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. Because, of, you know, because we need it. We, want, we know it's something. I'm thinking that Dan Burns all over him here. You look at, look at Dan Burns. Look, he's grabbing. He uh, starts out and then he pushes him down. So I think that could have been one. Could have given that one. Look, there he goes. Look, look. He's impeded him, look. Steve, I think the I laughter think says a, it all. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that's all we need to say on that. The laughter I think from Mr Wright says it all. I think there's a different, there's another one. There was another one on Gabriel. There's another Paul <laughs> shirt as well on Gabriel. But you know what? I think that the way Newcastle d defended, I think a, a draw in the end was, was about fair. I think I was appealing for an amble on this one as well. I think it would have been very harsh to give this amble because, you know, he's, he's trying to block his arms gone behind. There's not much he can do there, so... Kind of clutching the straws a bit here, if I'm going to be totally honest. I am clutching. That yeah. was one of the few decisions the referee did get right. Yeah. 
Um, I thought it, I thought the referee was very picky tonight. I thought nine he made yellow it, cards, a joint record. A nine yellow season. card game. He he made it very difficult yeah. for himself. At times, I thought um, he made it difficult because early on in the game, he was adamant that he was going to show yellow cards, which then made it difficult because when another foul in, then he had to give another yeah. foul, a foul in a yellow card for that one. And I don't think he handled the game uh, uh, well at all. And we saw both managers animated at each other at the end as well. It was almost spilling off the pitch. Yeah, I, I think I think Mikel Arteta needs to have a word with himself or his assistants need to have a word with him and calm him down. I think he's disrespectful to the opposition. He's making it very difficult for referees who have a hard enough job as it is anyway. I get he wants to be animated on the touchline. If his if his players were behaving like him, he wouldn't like it. He would that that would cost him. So he 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 in my opinion needs to calm down. I get the big stakes. I get the top of the league. I get it's an emotional game, but he's making it very very difficult for referees, and he's been disrespectful to the opposition. Yeah, he's he's, he's very much in. He's he's very plugged into the game. He seems like that's the way he is. As that manager, you see some managers. You see Conte was like that. Sometimes you see Mourinho's like that. He seems to be one of those manager Pep. He's very plugged into every single thing that's going on in the game. You can see it on the line. So, you know, I'm sure that I've, I, people are saying it a lot now. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's something you'll look at. But at the same time, being my manager, I'm not going to uh, find too much fault with it. <laughs> <laughs> can that transmit to the players sometimes, though, in a negative way? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they know they're under pressure. But when you, when you see your manager on the touchline behaving like that, I mean, he, he has to calm down. He's the one that has to make the, the tough decisions and stay calm or try and stay calm in, in, in those difficult situations. At the minute, it, 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 it's, I mean, at times he's gone crazy on the touchline. Can't be helpful, can it? Newcastle, 13 unbeaten now to get a point, the first team this season, to get something at yeah. the Emirates. Does that just add to the belief in, yeah. in this run? Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a really solid performance tonight and that will be, Eddie will be delighted that his team have put that type of shift in. Um, they were always going to be asked questions because of the ability that Arsenal have, particularly in midfield and forward positions. Um, they didn't offer a lot themselves going forward Newcastle, but I tell you what, in terms of defensively, if you want your team to go out and fight and scrap and give every single thing in the black and white shirt, then those players have done that for Eddie tonight. But he knows deep down Newcastle are not going to win the Premier League, but he also knows that he's got a team that, that, that have got huge spirit and they will give him and the fans absolutely everything. And when you've got that, you've got a chance. And he'll be delighted with that performance tonight. But Arsenal are eight points clear mm. at the top of the Premier League. The last time they had such a big league at any stage, the Invincibles. Yeah, you know, I think they're, they're, they're in they're eight points clear and it's on merit. They've, they've beaten the teams they've had to beat. And, you know, again, Newcastle came. It was a tough game. Newcastle have been playing well this season, defended brilliantly. I think that what Arsenal lacked today maybe was something off the bench. You know, hopefully Emil Smith-Rowe will get himself fit. Maybe we'll see something may happen in January because I think they're going to need something because um, the way Newcastle came, it kind of can give you a bit of a blueprint how you can play against Arsenal. You can defend very deep against them. It's very hard to break down, you know, especially if they defend as well as they did. Newcastle just unfortunately couldn't break on Arsenal. They didn't have enough maybe... Um, support with Callum Wilson maybe in the first half to maybe go and cause Arsenal a problem going the other way. But I think it's something that Arsenal are going to have to look out for because if I'm, if I'm going to play against Arsenal at the moment, I'm probably going to set myself up like that and then hopefully get something on the break. So you do need something off the bench. When you're looking off the bench, our substitute with Tommy Yasu came on, a defender. We re when we really were needing some, like a forward, we needed someone offensive that can, um, can contribute something creative towards the game to maybe open them up a bit. OK, so... Uh... I'm inside our studio, Rebecca Lowe, Danny Higginbotham, Tim Howard. Well, entertainment, yes. Mm. Feistiness, yes. Tempers, yes. How will Arteta feel about the result? Um, I think he'll be a little bit frustrated. I don't think it's a bad point. We know how good Newcastle have been. But what we saw for the first time today, probably from Arsenal, was becoming a little bit frustrated. We saw towards the end of the game, shots being taken for 25, 30 yards out, flying over the bar, and a little bit of desperation. But you, you do expect that at some points because Arsenal have been so good this season. Disappointed with Arsenal today? No, not at all. But I, I, I do think we talked that now they're being hunted. Now there's expectation. Up until this point, I don't think there was. I think it was a little bit of a fairy tale. Now it's their title to lose. So they're going to have games like this where they have to manage it at the end. And we talked, they're off, off camera. There was some... Bad decision-making in the final third, which we're not used to seeing from Arsenal. They should have gone wide and, at certain times and they tried to go through the middle. So these are things they're going to have to figure out as they chase this title. I think one of the things is as well is that Newcastle have gone to Arsenal 
you know, defended really well. Let's, let's not go away from that. Defensively, they are so strong, but they made it a physical game. Do other teams try and use that as a blueprint now to play against Arsenal? Because... You look back throughout the games this season, not many teams have actually been physical with Arsenal. I think Arsenal can overcome it, but I think you'll see a bit of physicality now with teams that are going to come up against Arsenal. Interesting. That could be the way. It could be. What I would say is it's still a difficult tactic because mm. you can be physical with them, but give Newcastle credit. They defend their lines well. They were able to get back in transition as well as be physical. So today was really good for Newcastle. Yeah, really good day for Eddie Howe's men. Let's bring you the story of the game then. Three minutes on the clock and we'll start off Martin Odegaard with an early chance. Yeah, and you're just thinking he, he has an opportunity to keep this down and he gets it wrong. You're just surprised. He has such a beautiful left foot that when that volley falls to him, you're thinking he could hit the target, but it wasn't to be. This is Arsenal at their best, just free-flowing. You see once the ball gets picked up in transition, Loads of red shirts flying forward, even on the underlap here. Chaka wanting the ball. It's a little bit heavy, a little bit heavy in the end. It slides in, just hits the side netting. But it was a chance. This goes down as a really good chance. Odegaard with the free kick. Gabriel with the header. And from this angle here, you just watch Nick Pope in the Newcastle goal. Puts the brakes on and stops. All he can do is watch it. That was incredibly, incredibly co close to being the opener. But it wasn't to be. And then just before halftime, Newcastle with a corner. Joe Ellington nips around the back there. It takes a flick at the front post, and I just think it comes too quickly to Joe Ellington. Otherwise, that should be on target and a goal. Should have put them up 1-0, but it stayed 0-0 at halftime. And then into the second half, Mar Martinelli gets a chance here from the corner. It's a really good header. He's just outside the post. It's really difficult to try and glance that header back on goal. And you can see there what a really good effort it was, but just goes wide. And then Newcastle didn't have a ton in the game. This ball just gets helped back in. And Dan Byrne with a header across. And Murphy there really should be selling out, putting his body on the line. I mean, there's a goal to be had there. And credit Chaka for edging him out on that particular play. And then Ketia has a chance here. This is the best chance, I think, of the game for Arsenal. And Nick, Nick Pope comes up with a brilliant save. And Ketia just down the side, does everything right. Gets a clean strike on it. Nick Pope really strong to thwart that chance. Once again, Arsenal in the box. Look at all the red shirts in the box. Unselfishness here. Claim for a handball. You can see all the Arsenal players, they want that handball, but it hits the left elbow of Murphy there. It's tucked into his body. You just see there, it's, it's, it's a natural position. Never a penalty. Mikel Arteta doesn't like it. Eddie Howe let him know where he can go. The referee tries to get involved there, but <laughs> That's what happens when you're at the top of the table. It's important. When Arsenal have won every game at home so far this season, you've got such a wretched record here. What sort of result is that? Yeah, huge. Um, to be fair, I thought Arsenal were really good. They were a tough team to uh, figure out. The players uh, move about a lot in midfield, so I think we struggled with the press. Um, they started really well. Um, thought we weathered, weathered the storm for a bit, but uh, I think it just shows how resilient we've been probably for the past year. Um, and, and when we're not playing at our best, uh, we are, we're hard to beat. How heavy was that storm, particularly in the first part of the game, and particularly on your side of the pitch? <laughs> yeah, Saka's uh, yeah, Saka's a great player. Um, he can go both ways. Uh, I think the wing has helped us a lot. Uh, doubled up on him. Um, I thought we, we sort of got the hang of him um, as the game went on. Um, but yeah, I think that we've got a, a good mix of young lads and experience in the team, and I think we know that we want to weather the storm and would settled. Uh, I thought we grew into the game, um, and we were happy with the point. Was it key tonight as well to be tactically spot on in terms of the distances between full backs and centre backs, plus getting help from midfield, doubling up, sometimes trebling up on their forward players in the wide areas? Yeah, I think we've, we do a lot of work on sort of converging around the ball when the ball goes to the wingers. We try and get three players on them. Um, and I think the way that they bring uh, sort of Zinchenko into the midfield um, means they normally play sort of five forwards against the, our four back lads. So it's, it's tough, uh, mentally tough. Um, but yeah, but I'm, I'm happy with the way we performed tonight. Did you know that six clean sheets in a row, which equals a club 40-year record? What does that tell us about what you're doing right now? Uh, it just tells us that we're sort of believing in the, the philosophy and um, what the gaffers brought in. Um, we're a really sort of tight -knit group of lads and um, love working for each other. Um, and I think it was sort of really important that we got that clean sheet tonight um, against Arsenal. Were you looking to frustrate them as well, take the heat out of the game at times? I think you've got to. Um, I think if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with sort of a lot of good teams, sort of City and Liverpool as well, I think a lot of people just expect you to just let them win. Um, but uh, there's a lot of way to win, uh, a lot of ways to win a football game, um, 
and yeah, that's what we we'll, thought we we'll managed the game well. Heart in the mouth when they were appealing for a penalty at the end? <laughs> nah, I knew, knew we were fine. VR's fine, isn't it? Yeah, no bother. Well done to that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, let's hear what his manager thought of that, because I'm delighted to say that Eddie Howe is downstairs and joins us live right now. Eddie, thanks so much for speaking to us. What did you think when you heard and saw those claims for a, a penalty in those final seconds? And tell us about that conversation that was ongoing with Mikel Arteta down there. Well, obviously, at that stage of the game, you're thinking, please, no, the lads have given so much to the game. Um, that would have been a travesty for us. Um, I didn't think it was a penalty just because of the proximity. Um, you but you just never know. And, uh, yeah, delighted. Uh, me and Mikel, it was fine. Tell us about um, the game itself then, Eddie. It seemed like it was, it was a, there was a lot of frustration from the Arsenal team. Um, but in terms of what you take from it, I think a very, very good defensive display, uh, very good mentality from the group. Um, I think you saw real teamwork today. Uh, we weren't defending in ones. Um, it was very much twos and threes, a collective effort all around the pitch. I think Arsenal are uh, very, very good. They pose you different problems. They really stretch you. Um, and we knew defensively we needed to be rock solid. I don't think there was any period in the game where we were um, totally OK. It was, it was real work all through the game. Uh, we did have our moments. I don't think we were great with the ball today, but we did have our moments um, and we could have potentially nicked it on the counter-attack or from a set play. Was it getting through that first five or ten minutes when Arsenal really came at you? Yeah, yeah I, th I think a couple of self-induced moments that gave us problems early in the game. Um, I thought we settled down after 15, 20 minutes, got a foothold in midfield and started to play. Um, but as I say, Arsenal a top side. I think we did very well um, in the second half um, as pressure grew to be resilient. And I think Nick you know, had one save to make that I remember, one very good save. Apart from that, it was a lot of pressure, but uh, most of it in front of us. Moments yourself. I'm thinking about Joe Linton just before half-time, Eddie. Yeah, no, we did. And I uh, was a little bit disappointed we couldn't pose the more of a threat. Um, our, some of our counter-attacking wasn't of its normal level. Um, but set plays as well at the end, we got a few you think we could have done better with. So... Um, look, high standards, we, we, we're reaching high, but the lads are giving everything. I think you saw that today, the collective effort was superb. Eight hours and 45 minutes since your team conceded a goal. That must be a source of huge pride for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I don't like stats like that when they're read out because it's, uh, you're setting yourself up. But I sort of wanted to go under the radar, really, in terms of our defensive performance, which has been very, very good. As I say, that doesn't happen from three or four players. That has to happen from 11. Uh, and full credit to everyone. Now a little bit, Eddie, about, um, I suppose, your thinking, your psychology going into this game, because we'd build it really as a, a possible title challenge here tonight. Yourselves coming here in, in third place, Arsenal top. How did you see it? We wanted to attack the game. We wanted to be ourselves. The reality of that, I don't think we quite were, but I think that's credit to Arsenal with how they played. I think they forced us to sit a little bit deeper than we would normally want to. Um, but sometimes you have to do that in, in, in a game. You have to slightly tweak how you play to stay in the, in the match. I felt we had to, we did. And the players deserve all the credit for coming through that test. What do you think that's the next stage then of your development, Eddie, as a team? Because we've seen how solid you are defensively to go and really attack teams like Arsenal on their own grounds. Well, we tried to do that today. Uh, that was the intention. Um, so there was no uh, backward steps in terms of our preparation. I think the next step for us is to have a little bit more quality uh, on the ball. I think there were moments for us today to really hurt them. But a loose pass, loose touch um, sort of broke those attacks down. So I think that's next in our evolution. Uh, but we're looking to improve all aspects of our game uh, continually. So that debate goes on, I guess, internally, Eddie. We, we've seen reports that perhaps there is a decision to be made whether more money is spent in January or you wait until the summer? How do you see it? Um, I think at the moment we will, we're, we're taking it day by day. We've got a strong team. Um, we have a strong um, group of players who are giving everything. Um, but we will assess, you know, January is a long month. We'll assess what we need as it goes through. Certainly there's, there's no intentions imminently to improve the squad, but that could possibly change. Come through three difficult games uh, post-World Cup without conceding a goal adding five points as well to the tally. So you're still in third place. How do you see that race now? What, what can you tell us about the targets uh, for the rest of the season? Very boring response from me. Um, th there's no race from our perspective. Is it just about being the best team that we can be on a continued basis? We need to improve. Uh, we're working hard to do that every day, as I say, with the players that we have. And that is our main goal. Eddie, we wish you well. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.